but we are going to talk about some cinematography ideas tonight because, well, why? Read my mind. Try to guess why we're going to talk about cinematography in a concept art class. That is a good answer. Anybody else? Yep. Very good. Good answers, everyone. Um, and I think, like, feel free to disagree with me, but cinema is like the art form of our age. Everyone grows up watching movies, watching TV. We all have internalized cinematic language from a very young age. And you know, even books take their cues from movies anymore. Like you read books that they really want to be like an action movie on the page. So you guys, I want you to be thinking cinematically with your designs. So we're going to look at some stuff and it's all going to tie in with stuff we've previously talked about. And hopefully like you'll say, yay, this totally makes sense and I will incorporate it into my work. And um, yeah, so let's do that. And stuff. So yeah, shots are just basically a way of describing how a film is composed. Because like we talked about last time, people have got to have names for all the things. It's just how we roll. So let's look at some types of shots. And since this is technically environments week, I'm going to kind of try to focus on showing you shots that have well integrated environments with their characters. So let's do it. Number one, the establishing or extreme long shot. Um, the great thing about these terms is that they're pretty self-explanatory. It's as the Brits say, just like it says on the tin. So an establishing or extreme long shot, we were referring to how far away the camera is from the subject matter. And the establishing shot establishes where the action is going to take place and sort of gives the audience context for what they're about to see. David, could you hit the light, please? Thank you. So we'll look at some examples that I think are particularly nice examples and coincidentally really cool constructed environments from film. And uh, just take note of some of the things they do. We talked about rule of thirds last time. So kind of pay attention to how many of these setups use any of the design and composition rules we've talked about. Also notice Stuff that's closer, uh, I will use my mouse, is a lot darker and more detailed. And as stuff gets further into the background, it really starts to fade and become dim. So um, it gives it that atmospheric distance kind of effect. There's a lot of overlap in our terms. So we're talking about um, types of shots first. We'll talk about angles next. So this is a different angle, but still a long shot. And an environment doesn't have to be complex to be beautiful or appealing, I guess, if we want to use that term. And you have the figure in there to show just how wide the scope is. You guys saw this movie, right? No? Okay. How to Train Your Dragon 2. Homework. If you haven't seen it, it's amazing. My other favorite movie. Um, and this is neat. This will give you guys some inspiration because this is, you know, an alien civilization that is a lot like us. 
And so it's got all kinds of cool details going on in the background as the camera like flies toward the palace. Questions on establishing shots before we keep going? All very clear so far? Hang in there, guys. Only a few more weeks and then we're done with this class and you guys can like sleep in the evenings or something. Okay, so the next shot is a long shot. And that doesn't mean, you know, where you have really bad odds on something, but you do it anyway. Um, and this is somewhat closer. It's not, it can be used at any point in like a film sequence. The establishing shot is the beginning of a sequence. The long shot can be used at any time. It's far enough away so that you can show a good idea of what the action is. And look how perspective-y this shot is. What perspective is that? It, it is one point. But it doesn't have to be. And I'm showing you interiors and exteriors to hopefully get your brains all excited and percolating. Um, I do believe on the notes I gave you guys on your environment thumbnails, I talked about angling the horizon on some of yours because it makes it a little more dynamic. We're going to talk about that in more depth in a couple of minutes, but Although it can also sort of make it feel like you're gonna fall off of the edge of the frame. So use with care, I guess. And long shots are good for iconic moments, whether it's film or in a comic book or what have you. Games too, you know, have their iconic moments. You guys definitely know what movie this is from, right? Yeah. <laughs> F. That is such a good question. I guess they didn't want to cause a ruckus by going out the front. <laughs> Everything looks like that in Gotham. Well, like in the Dallas Opera House is kind of in a dodgy area. Well, I, I haven't snuck out of the back of the Dallas Opera House, so. <laughs> oh, that's like all symbolic and stuff. Well done. <laughs> so many questions about Batman. Okay, let's hold the Batman questions. <laughs> I'm sure your classmates will help you. Okay, so that's long shots. Long shots, pretty self-explanatory. Gotham City, not so much, but um, <laughs> that is without. Our what? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> these are the hard. These are the. <laughs> there we go. They probably like. 
They probably in real life gave her a pillow to die on. <laughs> okay, all right. Are we good, guys? Why is there a room? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to progressively move the camera closer. Here's the medium shot. So that's when it's only like one ounce of whiskey. No, I'm kidding. It, it, that, um, that is your instructor being very short of sleep and totally failing this PowerPoint. Um, it's between a long shot and a close up. So uh, yeah, mentally scratch out that and uh, correct it. <laughs> and um, these are frequently used for dialogue. You can also use a medium shot for action, like especially one of those ac action sequences where there's a lot of cutting because the actors aren't really good at fighting. So you cut a lot. Um, so yeah, medium shows like half a figure or a couple of figures. So these are all um, relative. There's not like a, you know, well, if it shows from the waist up, it's a medium. But if it shows from the hips up, it's a long shot. There's no like hard and fast rule like that. It's sort of a gradation. Look at that beautiful environment. <laughs> yeah. That's a good movie too. There you go, Tyler. <laughs> oh, I should have. I should have grabbed a screen from the Power Rangers movie. That's a really good movie. Thank you. I liked it. it was I, I the new one? one? Um, I thought it was really good. I mean, you know, for values of really good. <coughs> oh my god, that was terrible. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> F. <laughs> F for spoilers. That's not how you spell. Um, I think that's the last one on medium shot. Still moving the camera closer. Any questions? It's pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. And you can see, I hope, what these various kinds of shots would be used for and how you might apply this and all the work that you are diligently doing for your final projects. Nod, nod vigorously. Very good. Close up. So this is, um, the close up is, you know, we're focusing on emotions, we're focusing on the importance of the subject being shown. And it's, as you might imagine, the camera is close to the thing it's filming. Very important. Very important things being filmed. Like Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's very important. What's it called? Mew Mew. <laughs> um Yes, and I hope as we go through these examples, you are continuing to pay attention to like what kinds of compositions they're using and how they make the frames be interesting and beautiful because if it's not good to look at, then what's the point, right? <laughs> I do too. Screen grabs from animation are the most fun because like 
in between the key poses, there are some really amusing drawings. I will dig up some, uh, some in-betweens of Flynn from Tangled for you guys to look at because they are amazing. So that's the close-up. Next we have the extreme close-up. Which you won't be using for your environments, but you can think of your props perhaps as being an extreme close-up. People like close-ups of eyes a lot. I guess because they're the windows to the soul. They super are, and it's so cool to see like the reflections and all the highlights and things. Then the detail of the scale pattern is really impressive. It could be an object that's important to the story. Have you any? Have any of you guys watched this movie? <laughs> no, come on, it's an awesome movie. If anybody wants extra credit, watch this movie and then write a page about how awesome it is. Like, <laughs> El Dorado. <laughs> Moving on. And you can get a lot of information out of an extreme close up to, have you guys seen this movie? It's Thor. It's, Thor. it's the first one. You could look at the file name. Oh, spoilers. Oh. <laughs> He's the time doll. He's awesome. We are not going to talk about what happened in. Um, oh my God. That was the worst. I'm not okay. Yeah. So, d did you guys um, did you guys read that at Comic Con they actually had like a group therapy room for people who were traumatized by uh, Infinity? And you could get you could get a hug, and talk about how how it made you feel and and stuff, and and then take a photo with of yourself with a giant Hulk statue at the end. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. That is true. So that was types of shots. Here's types of angles. Again, the name is pretty, um, pretty much the definition. And shots and angles can of, and necessarily will be combined. So you could have a bird's eye view that's a close up, which would be kind of weird, but you could do it. But normally, it's going to be something like this. So this is from high above, and it's also an establishing shot. Speaking of Gotham, again. Yes. Do they not? I guess everyone was all about Frozen, and then they... I agree. But I have the controversial opinion that Frozen was terrible. 
Oh, it's fun. <laughs> they checked off the parents dying thing so fast that it wasn't even like cool. Like, it, wasn't it, like was not, it was not. It was. Like, oh, there we go. That's. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was. Um, it, it made a bucket of money, so yay, Disney. But. The dirty opera house, yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the um, I think it was the how it should have ended where she joins the X-Men uh, you know the how it should have ended YouTube channel where they do endings to uh, to movies so yeah the, the ending of Frozen was that um, she shows up at Charles Xavier's <laughs> school and uh Yeah. Um. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Yeah, I mean, if it's high up and they're tiny, uh, I should have found some examples of that. That's a really good question. Probably, yeah. I, I'm sure, like, probably the Dark Knight has some examples of that. Because, like, I'm thinking of the the scene where he's in Hong Kong. And the helicopter's like flying through the city and he's standing on the edge of a building with the cape flapping and it's all very iconic. Um, so a high angle, you are literally looking down on the subject matter and we all know what it means when you're looking down on someone, right? That's right, you're superior, you're better than them, they are lowly and nothing. So, um, I mean, it's a good way to give an overview of a scene, and it also shows that the subject is, in a way, powerless. Which, in many of these examples, is going to be literally true. Do you guys know this movie? Yeah. It's so good. Look back when he was wearing the helmet and he had no hair. Oh, but this is um the not a coronation scene, but you know the big ceremony at the beginning of Thor when he's Thor is all triumphant and and hooray, and we're literally showing that Loki has no power and that he wishes he did because he looks kind of sad and also jealous. So you can tell your audience a lot just by where you place the camera. And Lady Sif down there is totally not having any of his shenanigans. In, in my personal headcanon, Lady Sif is still alive somewhere. They better be. Okay, so low angle is the opposite. You're looking up at the subject, which makes them appear more powerful. We've got some cool lighting in here too. We're not gonna really talk about lighting so much because we're just not, because reasons, because I said so. Um, mainly because I want you guys to focus on composition, but I do want you to pay attention to how the silhouetted figure is sort of highlighted and stuff. Do you guys know this movie? No. <laughs> Something for the five. Uh, it's Run Lola Run. Mm 
<laughs> so yeah, these are all scenes where we're showing the character framed in such a way that they are powerful and mighty. Of course, like in this one, it all goes wrong for him like two seconds later. <laughs> That's a good movie. And the last one. I don't know why it's called a Dutch angle. <laughs> Um, it can also be used to convey the point of view of an intoxicated person because, you know, you're kind of tilty. But it also can add a lot of tension and make the scene more dynamic. And I like it. It's cool. They used it a lot in Thor. Like, a really, really lot. Go back and watch it again. You'll be like, whoa, he is tilting the camera all over the place. Oh, hey, there's some other stuff. I lied. There's a little bit of lighting. It's been a long week, guys. So there's other fun stuff you can do and other things you can think about. Like, everyone has seen The Matrix, right? Isn't it like, <laughs> isn't it culturally required? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, yeah, totally. So, if you go and watch it, notice the lighting and the coloring. Because every, yeah, it's super green in the, um, in the computer simulation. Oh, spoilers, sorry. <laughs> and um, in the real world, everything is a lot more earth tone. Like on the ship. Yeah. That is true. I think I was thinking of the second movie when they have the, like, the rave. That's like half the movie. <laughs> no. Mainly this is here. Um, Dutch angle. Also having um, a framing element can make your, your composition a lot more interesting. And um, I think we use the rule of thirds too, because this person is like one whole third of the screen and it sort of leads your eye to Thor's face there. So it is totally there only for compositional reasons. As with the shot from Batman Begins, you can do lots of cool stuff with silhouettes and contrasting highlights and shadows to make your compositions look cool, basically. And again, framing elements and beautiful landscape. And, um, I think this is a really beautiful shot just to admire. What what uh, um what are some other things you might notice about this shot? What makes it work? What's cool about it? You guys tell me. 
It's super big. Okay. Like it gives you a lot of space. What else? Color Good color contrast. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And you're so you're saying that the colors like reflect their personalities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. What else, guys? It is it is very balanced, but not perfectly symmetrical. You're absolutely right. Anything else you guys notice about it? There's a lot of background. Do you notice how the mountains kind of fade into this sort of blue-green haze. Like, I don't even know if that's a real background or if it's some kind of composite image, but it looks really good. It's a simulation. They're in the matrix. Okay, any other observations? Any questions about what we just ran through? We did kind of do a at least a jog, if not a sprint. No? Okay, well, if there are no questions, and it's clear why I showed you this, no one is confused on that point. You learned a thing or two. Excellent. Objective achieved. <laughs>